Andrew's just bought a huge tree for the chipper. And I can get my phone out of my pocket quick enough. You can't grip it properly now, it must be like a bit wide at the end. I have to put it in branch first. Why did you want to chop it a bit and then put him back in? It's a bit cold, so we took the 18 van to get some breakfast. It's a beast. The back in stock. These are the best because they have a black lining. These ones have a white lining. So if you were any lads that were fake tan, don't want a teal one. Or girls that were fake tan, just be careful. Just off to post some hats off the uh yesterday's video i had to edit it again so it might not have made sense a bit with amian because there was music in the background and youtube said there was a copyright infringement so if you watched yesterday's video and wondered what was going on that was what it was and it delayed the video going up as well so that's why i'm in the car I've just turned the radio down before i started recording this is one of them fields a week where we had a slight technical issue with the drill so we came and patched it up and i don't know whether you can see these little lines in the middle there where it's just starting to come through when you look close it's hard to really see but this is wheat basically drilled a good i don't know month or so after that wheat there some has been grazing though but this field is full of hers so i think that's what it is but it's it's it needs some early fertilizer let's get it going it's not worth reseeding it because most of the field and going over there where it's bit lighter soil that's fine but the patching up obviously worked otherwise we'd have had these huge burr patches where the drill pressure hadn't cut through where the tram lines had been or the combine tracks had been so it's a bit sparse but we'll keep it often a poor winter crop can still out yield a spring crop so we'll just see what it goes like this is a headland so i was still burr but it's not too bad at all to be honest Got T and J here for oilseed rape, so we're gonna get them loaded up now, get them out of the way. You can tell they're here because it's dinner time. Wagons always turn up at dinner time. Just sighting the fence with the edge cutter on. There's a joystick for it. It's nice and warm. Been on the phone. Long story short, there's a whole thing coming out about red diesel, white diesel. Are we gonna keep it on? Can we not? There was a guy from HMRC said the other week in Ireland that tractor runs and charis uh, tractor runs and Plowing matches can no longer use red diesel and have to use white diesel. Now, I was always aware that we had to use white diesel anyway, but I had a phone call yesterday for a guy claiming that there was used to be an exemption for charitable events and it's not going to be in the new legislation when it comes out. Now, I can't find the exemption anywhere and I don't know anyone else that can. Does anyone watching tonight know that there was an exemption for charitable events? And if so, where we can find it? Because it would be nice if we could still keep it included in the new legislation that's coming out in April. So let me know if anyone has heard of this or knows where we can find it. Very profound saying on the T and J wagon. Oh, 
another one leaving. Other side. Shed's definitely getting empty now. So I'm just cleaning out that corner, putting it to the main pile near the pedestals, then we'll take this one out. Um, I think someone was using the loading shovel to move the chip away. But quite didn't know where the chip blows. Finally found the screw in the tyre. If you can see it somewhere over there, where is it? So sure, I'm gonna fix it now. Jacks, what a beast. Never seen that before. It's got like sound deadening in the tyre. That was a little blighter that was in the tyre and I think it's been in for like two years. I'm going to press the cold start on the John, uh, David Brown, John Deere, what am I saying here? I thought it doesn't seem to want to stay in. Do we have to put the hand throttle on maybe? Put the hand throttle on. Try that. There we go. Click. So hopefully it should start easier because we're going to take the edge cutter off in this bay. So let's give it a little bit of heat and try it. It's not been running for a bit. jump pack on it just took the exhaust off and look still smoke coming out of it <laughs> the battery's in there and it's a bit awkward to reach so just clipped it on the positive on the starter motor and on the earth point there we'll try that it's no exhaust so it'll smoke a bit more I won't be happy about that. There we go, another cylinder's going now. He's firing on the two or three. This is actually worse because I pressed the cold start. Maybe I should have not bothered. Sort of running now. But only on a few cylinders. Maybe two or three out of six. Third one now, perhaps. Let's cover the shit. There we go. That's at least five or six running now. It's covered the yard. Andrew's been flying on the chipper today. The pile is pretty much gone again. Sam's just getting the last bits up with the bucket because it's like chasing it around with the grab. Then we're going to load fertiliser and pull the fertiliser spreader on because tomorrow's supposed to be not windy. But the wind's done us a big favour because it's dried the land up. So hopefully when we're travelling it won't be sticking, we won't be making a mess. Got the spreader on now, ready to finish off tomorrow if it's not windy. But the screen's got cold again and stopped working. I'm going to take it in the house and warm it up, see what it looks like. It's just started raining, so we're just, well, snowing really, so we're just loading up the line for tomorrow morning. We're doing it in the shed so that we don't get ratchet straps wet, because hopefully tomorrow's dry. And then um, we're good to go, hopefully. Birthday bumper time in daylight. There they are. Pause it if you want to see better. 
I'm not reading them all out because I always get them wrong. Name wrong. Don't forget, send them on Instagram, nothing else on the morning off. Don't say it's my partner's birthday on the 28th of February tomorrow because it'll just be forgotten about the 28th of February. So Instagram on the morning, AgriContract on Instagram and AgriContract on Twitter. That's also the website as well if you want to buy a nice hat. You don't see many of them about nowadays, the original minis. Rest of the seed beans turned up while I was at the conference. They're just normal beans, but clean, no, no seed treatment on them. I was talking about putting the GPS onto this mower. Loads of people said, why do you need to do that when you're growing the sunflowers? Why don't you just mow them when they're tall? Well, there's three very good reasons why we don't. One is when we mow them when they're tall, it creates a mulch, which means that when you're walking around, you don't get your feet muddy and the path stands up better. The second one is the sunflowers and the field type and the soil type. They all grow a little bit different depending on where they are in the field. So then we make use of where they've grown well. So if it's been heavy ground, they'll grow really good in dry weather. If it's light ground, they might struggle in dry weather. So until the sunflowers have got to a certain height, i.e. when they're ready to flower, that is only then that we can see what shape we want to do the maize in. And then also, the other thing is, is if we move the mood, if you mow the paths when they're little, then they don't compete for light against each other. And all the ones near the path would be really small because they're getting loads of light. So that's like the three main reasons why we don't put them in until they're really ready. So that is the reason for using this mower with the flail mulcher deck on and putting the GPS on it. So it seemed logical to mow when they're small. I know it does. And some people with maize do do that. But for some flowers, it, it just doesn't work. Someone's excited he can smell something in this box. Is it for you? Is there something in this box for you? Oh, can you smell that? Can you smell that? See what it is. Ooh. Smells like dog food. Whoa. Are you excited? Are you excited? Oh, yeah. So, here Ollie, I've been watching your videos for a while, enjoy the on the space of farming life. Um, hopefully Chess enjoys the food. Can regards the natural dog food company, thank you. So natural dog food company, I sent Chess that a present and he looks happy about it. So on behalf of Chester, I would like to thank the Natural Dog Food Company for sending some dog food for Chester. He's very, very excited and he ripped the bag open and enjoyed it. So you could probably see that on his channel as well. Also, sorry about the quiz question for the day before. It was for lifting the hedge cutter up, the little hook thing. So that was that. Another quick thing. How many people watched The Fast and the Farmerish last night on BBC3 that Tom was ho uh, host hosting, presenting? I did. So what did you think? Leave a comment below anyway. That is all, and I will see you tomorrow, and hopefully we'll get some field work done. Thanks for watching, and here's a guest outro. Don't forget, guest outros need to be landscape, not portrait.